All things arise from Tao. They are nourished by virtue. They are formed from matter. They are shaped by environment. Thus, the 10,000 things all respect Tao and honor virtue. Respect of Tao and honor of virtue are not demanded, but they are in the nature of things. Therefore, all things arise from Tao. By virtue, they are nourished, developed, cared for, sheltered, comforted, grown, and protected. Creating without claiming, doing without taking credit, guiding without interfering. This is primal virtue. Those of you who have followed this series pretty closely may have noticed this chapter honors the concept of virtue. While in previous videos, we have spoken of virtue as sort of a slightly less optimal substitute for following Tao, and I'm thinking more specifically about the chapter 38 video. This is due to my own mistake in using the word virtue, even where the actual text of chapter 38 uses the word goodness. This might be hair splitting to be honest, but although the words virtue and goodness do have largely the same definitions if you were to look them up in the dictionary, we're using them here to refer to completely different concepts. The virtue that I referred to in chapter 38, which I really ought to have called goodness to stay consistent with the text, is a person's own ideas of what is right and wrong. The virtue referred to in this chapter is something different. It all gets even more confusing when we notice that other translations of chapter 38 translate goodness as virtue. Sure makes me wish that I could read Chinese. If anyone does have a knowledge of the different words in Chinese used for these different concepts, I would love to hear about it. However, for our purposes, just know that in chapter 51, we are dealing with virtue in the sense of what is meant by te, as in Tao Te Ching, or the classic book of the way and virtue. This virtue is more than just people's ideas of right and wrong. The chapter tells us that all things are nourished by virtue. Later, it says that all things are nourished, developed, cared for, sheltered, comforted, grown, and protected by virtue. Obviously, individual people's ideas of right and wrong in and of themselves do not have the power to do this. Therefore, there must be, amongst all the ideals, prejudices, constructs, and theories of mankind, some overarching form of objective goodness and rightness. From how it's described in the chapter, it almost feels like this virtue is not only a description of certain kinds of behavior, but a force in and of itself since it has the power to act on the 10,000 things of its own accord. Perhaps this is the primal virtue to which Lao Tzu was referring. If you're enjoying the videos, make sure to check out the Discord, which you can find the link to in the description of the video. I'm very interested to see what you guys have to say about this concept of virtue and what it means to you. But in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow for chapter 52. Peace and blessings.